Hi folks, welcome to another episode of Apps for Success. As always, I am your host, John Bowman. In each episode of Apps for Success, we pick an app and show you how it can help you with your customer success endeavors. This episode, we're going to be learning about Google Forms. Google Forms is an extremely useful app to help you with your quantitative customer research and to help establish your voice of customer. If you're not using Google Forms or Typeform or an app like it in order to do some customer research, well, shame on you. You should be. And we'll show you how in a little bit once we dive into the app. But first, a joke. Why is the capital of Ireland considered the fastest growing city on earth? Give up? Because it's a Dublin every day. <laughs> on to the app. Here we are at Google Forms. If you need help finding it, just Google. Google Forms, F-O-R-M-S, okay? Now there is a personal and a business option and it is included in your G Suite subscription if your company subscribes to G Suite, but we're just gonna use the personal option here. One thing I love about Google Forms is that there's a free template gallery. You can see these are all the templates that are already loaded inside of your account. One you might pay special attention to is this customer feedback one, right? But notice all of the different uses you can use Google Forms for. You can do party invites. You can do uh, RSVPs, right? Another thing is contact information. So if you wanted to, let's say before you had to get on a call with a customer, you could have them fill out a quick form that was inquiring about why they had to get on the call. Now, you probably don't wanna do this. Maybe your sales team does, I don't know. But again, it's just putting out there what you can do. I love getting feedback through a Google form. There is obviously a job application option, time requests, etc. cetera. Um, so let's dig in a little bit more to what we can do here. We're just gonna click a blank form by clicking the blank option. When we do, you're brought here. The default color for me is purple. Yours might be a little bit different and it's really easy to just change the color, whatever it is that you want it to be. Very, very easy. I happen to love purple, so I'm gonna do that. You can always choose an image and you can import images or choose another image if you want to just to make it a little bit easier. Um, this is a little bit, let's do some feedback. So we're gonna use, well, we don't wanna use the heart maybe. <laughs> um, I don't know, let's pick something abstract. There we are. So you can select the images that are already inside of here in order to create a little bit prettier of a form for you. Um, we're gonna go over in a little bit if, if, well, let's just do it now. If somebody is very concerned about how pretty their forms are, I highly recommend you go to Typeform. Uh, Typeform is really great for getting forms and surveys from people. And if you just click their templates option here, then you can see they've got a ton of templates as well, of good options for you to use. They have a very distinctive style as well. It's a little bit more pleasing to the eye and it's a little bit better designed for, uh, for ease of use, in my opinion. So again, if you're really concerned about how the form looks, you can, uh, again, preview the templates that are here at Typeform, and you can see it's a little bit prettier of what's happening, right? But Typeform can cost money, and it doesn't actually integrate as well with Google Sheets, so that's an option we're gonna go over here. First thing we're gonna do, though, is we're just gonna show you, we're gonna create an MPS. It's really, really easy. We just typed in the word MPS there. Um, the question we're gonna ask is, you know, how likely is it that you would recommend a suit to a colleague, right? Now, no matter how you feel about MPS, it is the industry standard. If you don't know what I'm talking about, MPS stands for Net Promoter Score, okay? Um, so again, Net Promoter Score is kind of the industry standard for how people are feeling about your brand. and. When you create a question, when you put in the question here, you have a number of options to select for what you want the customer or you want, you want the person who's filling out your form, uh, how you want them to answer your question. So it has like a, a smart option where it selects automatically what it thinks you want. And in this instance, we're probably gonna want the linear scale, but you could do multiple choice, you can do check boxes, you can do drop downs, short answers, et cetera, et cetera. In this case, generally speaking, MPS is one to 10. Uh, you can label one as the lowest, right? And 10 is the highest, there we are. And then generally, personally with MPS, I think it's really important that you actually ask people why they gave you the score they gave you. Um, so we're gonna make this required, meaning that if someone wants to take our survey, they have to fill out this question. And then we're gonna add another question. And we just hit the little plus button and it automatically creates another question here. The second question is gonna be, why did you score us? the way that 
we did. All right. And we're going to let them give us a paragraph answer, and I'm not going to make this one required. Okay. But what I want to highlight here is this handy dandy little sidebar, right? You can add a question. You can import questions if you want to. I don't really do that too much, but you can do it using the uh, Excel spreadsheet. You can add titles and descriptions to this particular question. You can add images. You can import videos. Sometimes, you know, it's a good way to get a quick uh, market research video out there, right? You can just say, this is our new video. What do you think of it? What's your idea? Um, you can also add different sections to your surveys. Now, we're not going to add a section to this survey just because it's about MPS, but we'll show you how to do that a little bit later. So this is our MPS. It's made up of two questions. Now we've got it built out. Well, let's say we want to send it to customers. What are we going to do? Well, it's actually pretty easy. We're going to click the send option in the top right. And when we do, you have the option to directly email people right here from the actual form, and you can require people to give you email addresses. I personally love the hyperlink option. You can always shorten the URL as well, and we can copy that form like so. And when we do, we can close it out. Now, when we close it out, what we're going to see is I'm going to go over here into my email address, right? And I've already got a nice little um, email written here. Uh, I'm just going to change or remove this survey. There we go. This survey. And what we're going to do is we can put it in here. And this is just a very quick way to get an MPS out there, right? Hi there. Can you take this survey for me? Thanks, right? And when you click on it, it's going to take you directly to the MPS survey we just created. So for our purposes, I'm just going to preview it. And when you preview it, this is what your customer would see. What's your email address, right? How likely is it to recommend us to a colleague? And why did you score us the way you did? Now, you can email this just through email, right? Just click here and click BCC and add in as many email addresses as you want to. You can do, gosh, uh, I think the number is 500. Sometimes I end up sending out 1,000 emails a day. I know that's crazy, but sometimes I do it through my Gmail just because it's so easy to send them through the BCC. Uh, but here on the MPS, it might require you to add in your uh, email address, right? example.com. How likely are you to recommend this colleague? I'm going to give a 10. Why did you score us that way? Because John is awesome, right? And we're going to submit the form. Once we've submitted it, your response has been recorded. You can submit another response, or you can actually turn this option off so that people do not keep submitting the same responses. But you'll notice here, now responses have come in. See that little one? It means there's a response there. And when we open it up, voila, it automatically graphs the answers for you. So you can see what's the distribution of people who send me things. And then you can see why did you score us the way you did? It gives us the specific answers you want. My absolute favorite part of this is that you can just click this little button and it creates a spreadsheet for you. Now, this new spreadsheet is going to create a new one, or you can take an existing one. I'm just going to create a new one. It's going to link the spreadsheet to the doc, and you can see all of the examples. They're timestamped. You get the email address. You get the score. You get what the person said. It's directly in a Google Sheet. And for those of you who are not aware, Google Sheets is pretty awesome. I love Google Sheets. I mean, there are Excel purists out there, but I'm going to go out on a limb here and tell you guys I am not one of those people. I love Google Sheets. Even if you are an Excel purist, you can take the spreadsheet and you can download it directly into Microsoft Excel format like so. Once you download it, it'll take you there. Okay. So this is just an extremely quick, easy, lightweight way in order for you to create essentially a survey for your customers. Now, what are other use cases you might use Google Forms for? We're going to show you. Another one you might consider doing is what's known as a CES. And the CES is a customer effort score, right? So for this one, you might want to ask something like the company, you know, I'm saying the company here, but you should put in your company's name, right? Or John or whomever uh, made it easy for me to do X, right? Um, or Y or onboarding or, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to gauge the effort for, okay? Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to select I like to select drop downs personally, or you can do multiple choice. Uh, multiple choice is a good one because you can say like, strongly agree, right? Oh, I put strongly, there we go. Strongly agree, right? Suggestions, see all that at all. Isn't that really cool? I just click that button and it automatically puts in the rest of the suggestions for me, okay? Now, I love the ease of use. Again, this is a smart response thing that Google Forms does for you. Once again, you can make this required, and you always do want to ask something along the lines of, uh, why did you score us the way you did? 
right? But you should consider sending out a survey like this after important events in your customer journey, after the person's onboarded, after their first initial call with the you know a customer success person, um, after their sales experience, right? Uh, you don't want to send these out to every customer just because it can be kind of annoying, right? Um, but whatever your random sampling is, definitely talk with your marketing department to get on the same page about sending this type of customer research data out. Speaking of your marketing department, I've actually seen our marketing department use Google Forms for exactly this type of reason. Here's what they do. They'll come here and they want to do some customer research. We're going to you know, call this one just customer research. Uh, and so in this customer research, what you're going to do is you're going to say, um, I get my industry, oh, I didn't even type it right, industry news from, right? Um, and what I mean by from here is you're asking your customers where they get their insights. And you can ask them for a short answer, right? You can ask them for a paragraph, or you can even go in here and you can create multiple choice, right? It might be like, uh, I don't know, for regular stuff, I, you know, it could just be google.com or um, you can add an other option, right? So what it means by other there is if what you have listed does not match where they go to get their news, they can select this option and they can put in specifically where they go. But what you're doing here is you're, you're trying to get data to put yourself more into your customer's shoes, right? So I get my industry news from blah. The reason why you ask this question is because that's where you want to get your industry news to, right? So, uh, you know, I might, another question you might ask is, I read these blogs. And then you want to do a little checklist. And in that checklist, you can put in specific blogs, you know, industry blog one, industry blog two, whatever it is. And again, you're just trying to better understand where your customers go for content. Another great one to ask is, I love these podcasts, right? List out the podcasts. You're trying to become much more close to your customer, right? There is power in proximity. The closer you are to your customers, the better you understand them, the better you can be their trusted advisor. Right. So think about those questions that you would do. You could do some customer research this way. Again, it's really easy. You can send it out. You can email. You can create that link. Remember that link we had? And then you can just set this up in whatever marketing automations you have to send out based upon whatever point of the customer journey that the person's on. Um, and then you can get from there your spreadsheets to understand exactly what's happening. Now, the other thing that's really cool with Google Sheets, anything inside of these Google Sheets actually relates back to something we talked about previously, which was a company called Zapier. Do you remember Zapier? We reviewed Zapier a while back. Now, the only reason why I bring this up is because if you have a Google Sheet form, right? Like this is our MPS one, okay? Uh, and our MPS one, then what we can do here is we're gonna take Google Sheets. Right. And so we're going to connect to Google Sheets uh, with, let's say, Gmail. OK. Uh, and so when this happens, a new or updated spreadsheet row, a new spreadsheet row, new worksheet, um, we're going to say new or updated spreadsheet row. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send an email and we're going to use this that. And so what this will allow us to do is we can connect an account. I don't know if it's going to pull up my account. We'll find out. There we go. Um, so we're going to allow that real quick. And if we get a new response here, we can automatically send out an email, right? Now you're wondering, what does that do for me, John? Well, we're gonna, I'll show you, right? So we're gonna take the MPS one, perfect. We're gonna tell it which spreadsheet it's on. It's on form one, there we go. And the trigger, we're gonna make it specific to a column, right? So we're gonna pick the, this column. There we are, and we're gonna continue. Anytime we get something new inside that column, then we're going to send an email. That email we can send is a templated email, right? Um, and we can say we're going to connect that account. Again, I'm just working you through this really, really quickly. But the power of put, getting a Google form, connecting it to Google Sheets, is that you can use Zapier to then automate responses to be sent out to people, right? You can send out this email address. Um, you know, we're sending this email to the email address the person put in. We can BCC or CC ourselves a copy. We can put it from our particular email address. We can also say what the particular subject was, right? So we can take, they told us the reason why they gave us a score. We can take that and we can put that as a subject. And we can come in here and we can put in a body, right? And the body is, 
we can put in whatever it is that we want to put in there okay um, but think about the power here folks you can get responses from customers you can put them in spreadsheets in order to analyze the data and then once you have the data you can use zapier to create workflows that are automated from what the customers show you so that's why i love google forms they're very lightweight they're very easy um, I hope you like them. They're, they're something that you should be using. Just consider using it even for your own book of business. If you're not gonna send it out to all your customers, send it out to your customers. You know, And maybe you might wanna even use it for something like a customer highlight. You, know? you can uh, create a specific form where it's all the questions that you would ask your customer. What's the name of your company? Where are you located? What do you like to do for fun? How many kids do you have? You know, Whatever those things are, you can use Google Forms to help standardize the process and give you an ability to analyze the data. As always, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I look forward to helping you guys out next week. Please leave a comment below if you have an app you'd like to review, and I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye now.